I know I'm a bit late to this since it happened earlier in the month, but I want to talk about David Menzies. The inciting incident for why I feel the need to talk about David was that he was arrested while trying to ask Liberal Finance Minister Christian Freeland a question in his role as a journalist for Rebel News. Freeland, how come the Deputy Prime Minister was on her way to an event in Richmond Hill, Ontario. Why is your government supporting Islamo Nazmi? When Rebel News' is David Menzies tried to ask a question, she didn't answer. Then Menzies and an RCMP officer make contact. Under arrest for assault. For those of you who don't know, I used to do a podcast called Imperial News, where I spent a lot of time covering Rebel News, which used to be called Rebel Media. And so for years, I have seen David Menzies, who has been an employee with Rebel News slash Rebel Media since its founding in 2015. And during his tenure with the company, he has been involved in several altercations with the police. There are many reasons why I want to talk about this incident. The first is that I have now seen this incident covered by the mainstream news media in Canada, likely in response to the fact that the leader of the official opposition in Canada has responded. Beyond some more nuanced critiques of covering this story, I do feel some contextual content has been missing from some of the reporting, and having spent way too much of my life covering Rebel News and talking about David Menzies, I feel I might have something more to offer to this story. Another reason I want to address this is that there is often a lot of online chatter that results from these stunts by David, and I wanted to add my two cents, namely whether or not Rebel News and by extension David Menzies should be treated as journalists, but also the extent to which the police response to Menzies has been adequate or justified. To begin with, the question of whether or not Rebel News, or more specifically David Menzies, are journalists, I want to first state how I find this question kind of silly and annoying, even though it always comes up. To begin with, journalism is not regulated in the same way as, say, being a doctor. You don't become a board-certified journalist, and often people who are not a part of a journalist organization can still do the work of journalism, and I would still call those people journalists. I have also seen people complain that Rebel News is not in fact journalism because they have a bias, and in this case they have a very clear right-wing bias. But again, everything is full of bias. So this critique would apply to everyone. The problem with Rebel News is not their bias, or I should say uh, their bias sucks. It really is a problem. But in terms of whether it makes them journalists or not, their bias is irrelevant. The problem is that most of their coverage is self-referential. In other words, they often make themselves part of the story, and at times the story that they are covering is solely about themselves. The purpose for doing this is kind of obvious when you think about it. Any journalistic work that they actually do is boring at best and bigoted at worst, therefore limiting the extent to which they can grow their business. And with these limits, how do you bring new eyeballs to your content? Especially those who might not be as willing to buy into all your bigoted nonsense. Well, one way is to be as annoying as possible such that you get arrested and then gain all that unearned sympathy. I think it was in the CTV coverage of this story, they did reference a few times that Menzies has been arrested before. Menzies has been arrested at least four times while working for Rebel News. But it's worth pointing out that it hasn't just been a few times, and it hasn't just been David Menzies. In fact, Ezra Levant, one of the co-founders of Rebel News, made his career off of being a victim after he was investigated by a human rights tribunal after publishing racist drawings depicting the Prophet Muhammad. Whether or not you think Ezra was merited in doing this stunt, or whether it violated human rights, 
Ezra still used his victim status to publish a book. And with the book, liberal thinkers like Christopher Hitchens came to his defense. Even Rick Mercer did one of his walking, talking rants supporting Ezra. People who cover politics in this country, they know the name Ezra Levant. The rest of the country, they couldn't pick him out of a lineup, which I always believed was a very good thing because, without a doubt, He's one of the most aggravating men on this earth. And I only say that because, in full disclosure, he happens to be a friend of mine. I've known him for over 10 years. The last time I saw Ezra, I was doing a show in Alberta. The audience, they were all conservationists. They were saving rivers. Ezra picked me up after the show for a beer. I walked out front. There was Ezra, leaning against his Hummer, smoking a cigar, and yes, the engine was running, which I'm sure he did purely for my benefit. The man is a provocateur. He is an agitator. And now, thanks to the Alberta Human Rights Tribunal, God forbid, he's a freedom fighter. Ezra wasn't any less bigoted back then, but the mere appearance of him being a victim for publishing those drawings brought him sympathy from liberals who otherwise wouldn't publicly endorse the other garbage shit he was saying at that time. Since then, Ezra has also gone on to make a spectacle about being denied access to the leadership debates in Canada. He's also made a spectacle of the fact that he was being sued by the government for violating third party election laws in Canada. But it isn't just Ezra, of course. They did the same thing when one of their former employees, Kian Bexty, was forced to quarantine during the pandemic. And also, again, after the RCMP showed up at Kian's house when Kian allegedly had received leaked documents relating to one of his COVID conspiracies. Hey, Hi. Mr. Rex? Sorry, who is this? I'm with the RCMP, Constable Wiley. What for? I'm with the federal, we're with the federal unit here in Calgary. And this is uh, Corporal Jolly. Thank you. What's going on? Is it okay if we step in for a quick no. private conversation? For a no. Okay. No, that's fine. We can talk about it. Are you going to speak with us? Or? What's this regarding? Uh, just in regards to, so we've been asked to come here and speak with you today, okay? And like I said, we're with the RCMP here in Calgary. Do you mind if I record this conversation? Well, for if it's private, we're not recording anything. Because we want, we want to chat with you. Yeah. About what, though? What's this? I'll explain it, okay? Well, we'd prefer if it wasn't recorded, but that's... Well, I, I mean, I have to, right? Okay. okay. Another incident that Rebel News milked so hard was when their employee Alexa Lavoie was allegedly hit with a rubber bullet after riot police were starting to clear out those trucker encampments in Ottawa. this was any other news outlet, one might question the decision to allow an employee who's unprotected without any visible displays notifying that they are press to stand in the front of an advancing police line. But the fact that a slightly bruised Alexa got footage of her being hurt earned her a spot on Fox News, and it therefore was a growth and funding opportunity. But the ultimate champion of this game is David Menzies. He was once arrested after trying to barge his way into an Andrew Scheer campaign event. Okay. A lot of drama here, Chad, yeah. today, unexpected. We didn't think an, an announcement about a disability tax credit would lead to this kind of thing happening, but election campaign and anything can happen. Uh, we actually have this of that incident, Glenn. We were able to get some. Let's uh, just show our viewers that while we stand by. We see uh, Mr. Menzies, who is with the rebel organization, uh, being arrested. Let's listen in. Tiananmen Square. I'm just trying to ask Andrew Shear some questions. He was almost arrested after harassing Ron McLean. This was around the time uh, when Don Cherry was fired from Hockey Night in Canada. Hey Ron, how you doing? Great, how are you doing? Good sir, I'm just wondering, how do you feel about the ratings for Hockey Night in Canada plummeting? No, no, uh, no, excuse no, me. No, 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 sir. Yeah, no, my wife. No, 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 sir. Uh, since Don Cherry uh, was fired. I wouldn't know, sir. Yeah. Huh? Excuse me, sir, I'm, not, I'm in a public no, place. No, 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 Ron, why did you throw Ron under the bus? I'm in a public place. What are you? Hey, 
You not hit me. What are you doing? You just hit me. Huh? I didn't you just hit me. I'm trying to get around you. You're holding back. Hey, are we going to take you down? I'm trying to do my job. No, you're not trying to do your job. You're trying I'm to in a public with... place. Yes, officer. you're not allowed to hit me like that. I didn't hit you. I got it on camera. Okay. Perfect. Are you guys kidding it's me? It's called criminal harassment. This That's is what assault. It is. He was arrested for trespassing while trying to ask Patrick Brown questions. Hi, officer. How you doing there? Good. My name's David Menzies with Rebel News, and um, I understand. So then we'll do we'll appropriate Japanese culture and uh, do that. <laughs> he was arrested after shoving a police officer in Montreal. This was during a stunt where they rented a boat to try to avoid COVID quarantine rules. Oh, the, oh, look at this, the affirmative action hire. Are you seeing on? Hey. Don't, 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 don't Go cover Menzies. Hey, do not oh, really? touch him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here comes do the real touch him. Did you touch him? Why did you touch him? Because he wasn't getting No, he drove into me. He drove into me. Are you hiding your name? Are you hiding your name? Are you hiding your name? Are you Are you hiding your name? Are you hiding your name? Are you hiding your name? Here are the thugs! Here are the thugs! Here come the thugs! Shay! 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 He was arrested at Melissa Lanceman's event after asking her and uh, her attendees bigoted questions about her sexuality and then didn't leave when he was asked. Were you chosen based on merit or based on sexual orientation? He was arrested in Ottawa when trying to get close to Justin Trudeau, again similar to the Christian Freeland incident, getting a little too close to the RCMP in that incident. The video from that incident as well is hilarious because they added the most intense music to really sell this to their audience. Get, it, get off me! Hey, I can... Hey, this is assault. Move. I'm on a side... What is this? I'm on a sidewalk. I am on a sidewalk. What is this? You cannot touch me. No rushing work. Hey. Am I... Are you kidding? Are you kidding? I told you. What is this? You can't. Am I under arrest? Am I under arrest? And I could go on, he doesn't always get arrested, but his main prerogative seems to be to instigate until something happens, and then when it does happen, the story becomes about what happens. And just to highlight how petty this can get, he once staged a one-man sit-in at a local LCBO because he claimed they sold him an empty box that was supposed to have a bottle of scotch in it. Now, a missing $100 bottle of scotch that you paid for, uh, you know, you can get upset about that. That's reasonable. However, I have my doubts, <laughs> especially about whether, uh, you know, in fact, there was a missing bottle of scotch. For example, the store had security footage that shows that all three bottles of scotch were individually scanned, but the employee uh, did not open each box to make sure that it was in there. However, if you think about it, if you're handling each box, you should be able to notice the difference between an empty box and a box that contains a bottle of scotch, especially if you're handling multiple boxes. But in the end, none of that matters because the LCBO agreed and said, look, we will give you a bottle of scotch. But instead of being a big boy and taking the bottle of scotch and saying thank you, he decides to film the incident. <laughs> whine like a little baby, annoy customers until the point where the staff literally had to shut down the store and they called the police. And they have milked this bottle of scotch story for all it's worth. I think it's been several years now that this story is ongoing and they just recently filed a lawsuit against the LCBO. But just let that sit with you how self-referential this story is. Can you imagine if Peter Mansbridge dedicated years of his life as an anchor on the CBC covering a time where he was allegedly ripped off by the LCBO. And of course, each time David or any other rebel employee has an altercation that brings them any media attention, what do they do? They create a petition. And when you sign their petition, you get solicited emails to donate to them. 
Save Rebel News. Please help us and we can fight this lawsuit against the government who's attacking us. Please, if you need more coverage from people who are standing up, donate to us and support Rebel News. Just in case you think I am exaggerating or making this up, even though I think it is pretty obvious what Rebel News is doing here, an ex-Rebel News employee has been vocal that this is their key selling tactic. The thing is, when you donate to a Rebel campaign, you're actually giving money to a business, not a charity. While the Rebel does spend a huge amount on lawyers, billboards, and URLs, this is nothing compared to what is actually coming in. These are simply tools to boost donations. See, emails are key for them. At the Rebel, you're put under immense pressure to create petitions and to turn stories into campaigns. Over and over, Ezra would drill into us the importance of collecting email addresses. To sign our petition. And chip in 10, 20, 50 bucks. To sign our petition. I've set up a petition. Sign our petition. You go to firebob.ca. Sign our petition. To sign the petition. Sign our petition now. And sign your name right now. We've started a petition. I've set up a petition. Sign our petition. Please sign our petition. We're launching a petition. Sign the petition. I want you to go to refugeepause.ca right now and sign our petition. I say we start a petition. And sign my petition. You to sign our petition. Will you sign my petition? Sign our petition. Sign our petition. And we're asking you to sign it. You to sign that petition. It's more than 10,000 Albertans have signed our petition already. We're well on our way to our goal of 100,000. Sign our petition. And sign our petition. And sign our petition. They can't stop us. This is how Rebel News makes money. To end, I want to briefly address the police violence aspect of this story. I agree in a lot of these cases that the police response is unjustified. That doesn't mean that I have a good answer to how this should be handled, since I do think, whether or not it meets the legal standard, that what Menzies is doing in these circumstances is a form of harassment. I used to argue that what Rebel News is doing is harassment in the form of pretend journalism. And with Menzies, the playing of pretend even extends to the fact that he dresses like a 1950s detective. So even if I think something should be done to stop David from harassing people, the police response is often unnecessarily violent and just serves to promote them even more by making David appear as a bigger victim than he really is. And at the end of the day, what is often missed and worth highlighting is that as a white man, Menzies is likely going to be safe in all of these interactions, which is probably why he's willing to take that risk as an older gentleman that he is. And while Menzies is able to take that risk, other journalists in this country from more marginalized communities are way more likely to be targeted by the police, and in those cases, the people targeted by the police are way more likely to lack the resources and attention to deal with that kind of legal and violent response from the police. For a recent example, Brandy Morin was arrested after covering the police dismantling an indigenous encampment in Edmonton, and unlike David Menzies, I don't think the leader of the opposition will be coming to her defense, let alone any of the leaders of the ostensibly center-left parties in this country. So while I understand and fully get the impulse of a lot of well-meaning left-leaning people to call out the police abuse, I don't know that we need to waste that much energy on what David is experiencing. David will be fine. David is not being silenced. He is simply getting what he wanted all along, which is your attention and money. The takeaway here is kind of bleak. There is not much that we can immediately do to change the incentives and make it not worth David Menzies' time to do these kind of stunts. We're not abolishing capitalism tomorrow, sadly. However, what I hope to be doing in this video is to at least highlight what they are doing so that when it happens again, and it will likely happen again, that maybe this video can help immunize some of you who are watching against falling for their shenanigans in the future.